Hello everyone and welcome to Kind Tuition Academy. Uh, kindly do me a favor and hit the subscription button on YouTube. So let me start by giving you the quote of the day, uh, which goes this way, that for every rejection that you receive in life, it is always a redirection to something better. So in our today's class, uh, we are actually to going to discuss four things. One is the consequences of surface tension. Two, we look at uh, action and reaction forces. Three, we look at the differences between mass and weight. Four, we will look at uh, the difference between a vector and a scalar quantity. A vector and a scalar quantity. So let's get started. Now there are two uh, consequences of surface tension. Uh, so I'll start by stating the first one. Uh, so the first one actually, the first consequence of uh, surface tension is that uh, um, uh, water insects can actually float on the surface of water. They can also skate on the surface of water at very high speed uh, without actually uh, sinking. So that means there is a force that is holding this uh, particular insect on the surface of water and that force is what we are calling the surface tension. The second consequence of surface tension is that uh, mosquito lovers can actually float on the surface of water without sinking. However, when uh, uh, the surface of water is oiled by using kerosene, because kerosene is an impurity, and remember we said that impurities will always lower the surface tension of water, therefore it makes these mosquito lovers to sink. Now, remember we have also added, uh, now when you add actually oil on the same same surface, remember that oil does not allow free uh, transfer of uh, air that is uh, in and be below the surface of water. So that means that the mosquito lava which have actually sunk uh, in the surface of uh, in the water will actually suffocate due to lack of uh, air, due to lack of air. Therefore we can use oil to control breeding in mosquitoes. Secondly we look at uh, what we call uh, action and reaction forces. Now if you have an object, for example here I have my pen here Actually, there are two forces acting on this particular pen. We have uh, the weight acting uh, downwards. So the weight actually constitutes what we call the uh, action force. So action force is provided by the weight of the body. Remember, weight is equal to mass of the body times the gravitational pull. So the weight acts downwards or the action force. Then the force that I'm applying in my hand uh, to maintain this object here such that it is not falling down, that is what we call the reaction force. So in short, we are saying that the reaction force is actually provided by the surface on which an object is uh, uh, being placed on, while the action force is provided by the weight of that particular body. So action force acts downwards, while uh, reaction force acts from the object upwards. The next thing we look at uh, the differences between uh, mass and weight. So of course, we looked at uh, mass in our previous uh, uh, classes, but we can just review it. Remember we said that mass is defined as the quantity of matter in a body. Mass is the quantity of matter in a body. Now weight actually is a measure, is a measure of gravitational pull on a body. A measure of gravitational pull on a body. Now this gravitational pull, remember there is the force of gravity involved. And we said that the force of gravity always acts downwards. So it means actually the weight of a body is always directed downwards. So because it is moving in a specific direction, we can actually say that weight has direction. Now in later on, we'll see that a quantity that has both magnitude and direction, we actually refer to it as a vector quantity. So we can conclude that actually weight is a vector quantity. Now weight is actually a force meaning the units for measuring a uh, weight will be the same as the unit for force which is of course the the newton denoted as a capital n now weight is measured by an instrument called a spring balance weight is measured by a spring balance now we say that uh, the weight of a body varies from place to place because of two reasons one is because the weight of a body depends on a gravitational pull which varies from one planet to another or from one place to another the second reason why the weight of a body varies from place to place is because of the shape of the earth and the rotation of the earth 
Remember, the shape of Earth is not a perfect sphere, such that it is uh, flattened at the pole, such that if you measure the distance from the center of the Earth's surface, actually to the poles, it will be shorter than when you measure the distance from the center of the Earth's surface, actually to uh, other parts, for example, the, the, along the equator line, along the equator line. Now, weight, remember we said weight is equal to mass times gravitational pull. So the gravitational uh, field strength, that is what we note by G, for Earth, we said it's actually 9.8 Newton per kilogram, although we usually approximate it to 10 Newton per, uh, per kilogram, 10 Newton per kilogram. Now this gravitational uh, field strength is actually provided by uh, the gravitational force. So sometimes we can also call it acceleration due to gravity or acceleration due to uh, free fall. So we look at a few examples on how to uh, calculate quantities involving mass and weight. But actually the formula used is that uh, ma na weight is equal to mass times gravity. Having understood what we mean by mass and weight, we can look at the differences between mass and weight. Now there are only four differences between mass and weight and we differentiate them based on a uh, particular uh, uh, things. One is that we differentiate mass and weight based on their definition. Two, we differentiate mass and weight based on their SI units or the units used for measuring them. Th three, we differentiate mass and weight based on uh, the instrument using for measuring each. Then lastly, we differentiate mass and weight based on whether it is a scalar quantity or a vector quantity. That is to mean whether it has both magnitude and direction or it has the direction only. So let's look at the first difference that is uh, in terms of their definition. So the first difference between mass and weight is that mass is uh, defined as the quantity of matter in a body. The quantity of matter in a body. While weight is defined as a measure of pull of gravity on a body. Measure of pull of gravity on a body. So that is the first difference between mass and weight. The second difference between mass and weight is based on the SI units. So the, 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 the units for measuring uh, mass is actually the kilogram, while the units for measuring weight is the newton. Three, we differentiate them based on the instrument used for measuring each. So remember we said that uh, mass is measured using an instrument called a beam balance. Mass is measured by a beam balance. While weight is measured by an instrument called a spring balance. Called a spring balance. Then the third difference, we differ the fourth difference, we differentiate them based on whether it is a vector or a scalar quantity. So remember, actually, mass is a scalar quantity. Why? Because it. Uh, another way of putting this point is that mass has uh, a magnitude or size, but no direction. While weight is a vector quantity, another way of putting this point is that weight has both magnitude and direction. It has both magnitude and direction. Now, the last thing, we actually look at uh, what we call the difference between uh, uh, um, a vector and a scalar quantity. So, what do we mean by a scalar quantity? So, a scalar quantity, these are quantities that have magnitude or size only, but no direction, but no direction. For example, something like mass. Mass is not specified in uh, any direction. Something like speed, it is not specified in any direction. Something like length, you can actually start measuring the length of a given uh, a, 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 a distance between two points. You can measure it from point A to point B, or another person can start from point B to point A, and actually the length will be the same, meaning it has nothing to do with direction. What matters in terms of length is actually the, the size or the magnitude. So a scalar quantity is a quantity that has magnitude or size, but no direction. Now we have several examples of scalar quantities. I'll give you a few. One is mass. Two is length. Three is speed. Then four we have uh, what we call the distance. We can also add something like uh, temperature. It is also a scalar quantity. Now vector quantities. Vector quantities. These are quantities that have both magnitude uh, or size and direction. They have both magnitude and and direction or you can say they have size and direction size and direction now remember if you are looking at quantities such as a uh, weight 
For example, you have said that weight depends on gravity, which is directed towards the center of the Earth's surface. For example, if I have a body, then I release it, it, ac it actually moves down. So it is always directed downwards. So uh, it is a vector quantity because vector quantities have both magnitude and direction. Remember we said magnitude means it can exist in uh, uh, different uh, sizes. For example, you can talk of a, a weight of uh, 2 newton. You can talk of a weight of 500 newton. So it exists in different sizes or in different uh, magnitudes, in different magnitudes. So we, have say, we are saying that a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. Now there are several examples of uh, 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 vector quantities. I'll give you a few. One is actually weight is a vector quantity. Two, we have what we call momentum is a vector quantity. Three, we have what we call uh, moment is a vector quantity. Uh, four, we have uh, what we call acceleration. We have what we call acceleration. Remember, acceleration has to do with speed, but in a specified what? Direction. Then five, we have what we call uh, displacement. Displacement is also a vector quantity. Now, we have come to the end of uh, our class today, but I want to give you a story connected to the quote of the day. Remember, the quote of the day actually said that uh, uh, um, for every rejection is a redirection to something better. Now, there are several stories of people who have actually been rejected and great things happened in their life. For example, we have, the, we have people like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs started his own company, employed people, hired directors, and the same, same people that he hired actually uh, fired him from a company that he started. He never gave up. He went on to start other companies. For example, we have the Apple, which produces the iPhone and even uh, Apple computers. We have uh, uh, the co-founder of uh, WhatsApp. He was called Brian Acton. Brian Acton was once rejected from Facebook, but he never gave up. He went on and uh, began his uh, uh, the WhatsApp, the famous WhatsApp. So that shows you that every time you are rejected, it, there is actually something better uh, coming in your way. So, in fact, you are supposed to thank everybody who said no in your life because it is because of them saying no that you actually learned how to do it yourself and even better. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Do me a favor and subscribe on YouTube at Kind Tuition Academy to help me access many students because I've made these platforms for them. It is meant for their benefit. Thank you.